So welcome to another video. I just wanted to kind of talk about something that some folks may not really know uh, what really goes on when you are sent to jail. Now, this is, a, uh, this is about my own personal experience and I was detained in jail uh, during the course of um, being arraigned. Um, the odd thing is that I actually had been out on bail. They had called me back um, to, for another hearing with the judge. And the judge, despite having said, fine, we'll let you go. Uh, actually, I didn't even have to pay any bond at all. Uh, that she said, no, I changed my mind, I'm going to send you to county lockup. Um, so I had walked in that day to court with no uh, expectation or understanding that I would actually be sent to jail. And so, you know, uh, my lawyer, public defender was with me. He was just a shock. Um, all he could do is uh, basically take all of my valuables and my cell phone and uh, he literally then had to call my family and let them know that I was being hauled off to county jail. So uh, it was a pretty traumatic part of my life, uh, you know, having never really spent uh, a long time in a jail. Uh, I, I, I had spent some time in a jail cell when I was arrested, but this is a little bit later than that. And, you know, being sent off to county jail was rough because we would be like the first person out of the courthouse, but we were basically like the public transit for all of the jails uh, in the region. So we would pick up people here, drop people off here. And so the facility that they were gonna send me was pretty far out of the city, about an hour. And the transport time took an additional, probably two hours because we had to go to all these different locations to pick up other inmates uh, that needed to be transferred from site to site. And um, it was my first experience sitting in a van with my hands and my feet shackled. Uh, it was it was awful. And uh, this happened during the winter. So I had no winter clothing on. Uh, basically, my ass was like on this metal grating, you know. So, uh, and then I'm kind of tucked in with like five other inmates. Um, I, who I will say were all ICE detainees. Uh, these are folks who have actually no understanding why they were being taken to the place that they were taken. And uh, to, when we finally got to the facility, I was put in a separate holding cell from the ICE detainees. And I just waited, waited and waited probably two hours in that holding cell and by now it was probably like six or seven o'clock uh you know the the day shift folks uh had started to leave and you're you're kind of seeing the people who were working kind of the midday to to, to evening shifts to start up and so it took a really long time for them to actually get me into processing so um, the first thing they made me do, and this is the part for folks who are uninitiated, this might scare you a little bit. So uh, they basically dragged me to a, a room like a, that had like two shower stalls in it. They t made me strip down all my clothes, uh, except for my underwear. And then the guy said, asked me, what, uh, what size are you? And so he, he you know, I told him, well, uh, medium is fine. And he's like, okay. He grabs uh, basically prison uniform from a guy through a booth. And, you know, he said, you know, what what size shoes you wear? I'm like, mm, 11. 
a woman and a half if you have it. He's like, okay, here you go. And then finally, as he's looking me, you know, with only a pair of underwears on, he said, now take, take the underwears off. I want you to bend over, kind of like basically, you know, uh, cough twice. And then it was done. For sure, he didn't look. You know, the reality is that no, no, no self-respecting uh, straight male uh, prison guard is going to be looking at your butthole. Uh, and it was even more funny because once I um, got changed into the prison uniform, I was then escorted to another section where they had basically the uh, TSA body scanners and I got into it and it scanned me completely a lot more reliably than somebody saying to say like take take off your pants I'm gonna look up your butthole um, I don't even know why they still do that so the fact that you can pretty much scan somebody's internal body if they were carrying any any foreign objects or, or contraband uh, you know, that, so having done all that, I continue to wait because, uh, it was my first time in a jail. They then had to do the intake for me and basically have me enter in all my information. I had to be, uh, photographed, mugshot and fingerprinted, um, DNA collected, and then they also um, asked me all this information, for example, like, you know, phone numbers of people that you want to contact. Luckily, I actually knew the uh, phone numbers of the people, uh, like family members and that, and I was able to kind of just write it out. Most people, if you don't know it because you just keep it on your phone, you, you may end up not, not knowing what numbers to write, and that's horrible. And then after I did that, I was transferred to, uh, to the desk for a uh, medical check. And I was actually met by a very nice nurse. She was very polite. She understood how long I, I've been waiting to, for this little intake process. So she tried to get me through it as much as possible. She asked me a lot of basic questions about my health. Um, as I'm telling her things, she's, she's like, oh, she's like, uh, very kind. Uh, it's, it's just very interesting when, when you have people who are nurses who have the mentality that these are human beings and they're going to talk to them as human beings. It's very different from guards. Um, so I, you know, she, she did what she could do to help me, uh, get, access to any of my prescription drugs so they would contact the pharmacy or contact my doctor and actually have them uh from a, like a, a pharmacy to uh somebody from the from the jail will actually go out to that pharmacy and pick it up from them and bring it back uh for me um and when we got kind of after the the medical part they were going to have to uh, figure out where I was going to stay, right? So uh, they asked me the question, kind of looking at me. Uh, uh, they said, do you want to go in general population or do you want to go into um, protective custody? You know, if, if you've seen all the other YouTube channels uh, on people who've kind of been incarcerated, you know, there, you know what kind of the, the, there's always that kind of concern. Like if you're going to go to general population, are you going to survive general population? Um, and if you go to protective custody, people are going to think that you're a snitch or a rat or, you know, whatever. So I, I know my own limitations. I, first off, I am very uncomfortable in places with a large group of people. I, you know, it, it's one of my phobias. Uh, and I, I kind of know myself that based on like my physique and 
all that. I'm not going to say that I'm gorgeous, but just based on my looks, I was going to draw a lot of attention. So, um, I had no problem telling them that I want to be in protective custody. Uh, even though, yes, the guard will look at you strange. will give you a look that why, why are you asking for protective custody? So, you know, even though I thought I was getting protective custody, what I, you know, what my, my, um, understanding of that was that I would actually be in solitary, uh, for my entire stay. And so they then escorted me to, uh, a, you know, where, where the cells are. And it was actually the solitary unit, you know, that's the, so the, the, the crazy part of being transferred to that section is that they then put you in a cage, you know, where they lock it, and then they make you take off all of your clothes again, butt naked, do the whole butthole thing for them to look at. Now, the difference is that these guys who are uh, the, the guards in the, the, the segregation units, they're bored. They got nothing to do because, you know, there aren't going to be that much activity when everybody's just locked in their cells 23 hours uh, out of the day. So, uh, and take into account, this is also, by the time I got down there to that wing, it was like 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Uh, and so when I finally got into the cell, uh, they closed it. It, uh, you know, like exactly like in the movies, it's just like a giant middle door automated closes. And that was it. I was kind of left to my, to myself with no, no supplies, no nothing. Um, I had a bed sheet with the rubber mat that goes on the bunk bed. I mean, no one was in the cell with me. Uh, I had a pillow, a blanket, and, you know, basically I, I had no idea what was going to go on. My only thing, the only thing that I knew was I was waiting for my lawyer to basically appeal my detention and bail me out uh, of jail. And... I ended up sleeping uh, the best that I could that night uh, because, you know, I had been exhausted by the, just the, the whole process of kind of getting intaked. And I just, you know, I woke up pretty early in the morning. That's when they, uh, they gave me breakfast, which was disgusting, the food, as we all know, prison food is disgusting. Uh, and they, uh, they did then have me meet with a counselor who did do what, uh, you know, folks would normally do is you're going to get classed. What that means is that they're going to look at your, your charges, your past criminal history, uh, anything else that may have happened to you on the way there to determine, uh, what type of unit you should be assigned in either like general population or protective custody. And so, um, you know, the, my, my counselor was actually, if I remember correctly, it was a very young Asian, uh, woman who she was a social worker. And so she asked me like all these questions and said, you know, what, where would you like to be assigned general population or protective custody? I said very clearly, protective custody. She she didn't question me again about that. She just said, okay. And it took a little bit, but then she processed the paperwork and says he's going to go to PC. And, you know, they made me take all my stuff uh, from that I gotten earlier. Then I was, you know, told to walk down these halls. And as you're walking through the jail, the doors only open as you get close to them. So you, you can be like locked into a hallway because they don't escort you. You're expected to walk on your own. And for me, having never done that, that was, that was pretty intimidating. And when I finally, you know, made my way up to the assigned unit, which I thought would be the protective custody unit, I got, I, you know, I buzzed, I got buzzed in. 
I got in there and I see it's like basically like a prison, like a um, army barracks. Like it's just rows and rows and rows of, of uh, bunk beds. And uh, having spent the previous night like alone, uh, sad, you know, just seeing other human beings was 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 a was a relief. So then that's that's kind of how I got into the PC unit while I was in jail. Um, so that's kind of my story. So if you've never, uh, you know, hopefully you've never had to go through the experience. But if you're wondering what other people go through, um, you know, when they're booked and you know when they're taken from court to being detained in a county jail or a, a local jail. This is the process that for most folks will go through. And um, I'll talk more in future videos about kind of my experiences of being in jail in that particular jail. Uh, you know, I have a lot, a lot of stories. Uh, and and they're, if you are uh, um, a buddy of Lucky, so laughing with Lucky, I'm going to also put his link in the message below just so you can see his channel. You'll see that he and I have had a lot of similar experiences. This stuff, you know, when you're gay and you're in jail, your way of looking at things tend to be, you know, pretty similar. So, um... So uh, hit the like button if you like this video. Uh, click subscribe because I, I do plan to update frequently so that it ends up in your, um, you know, your subscriptions feed so you can uh, take a look at other video topics that I'm going to post. Uh, if, if you're looking for, you know, uh, my previous video where I talked about my other hobbies, if you like to hear more about those first, uh, Please uh, leave a comment to let me know. But in the first couple of uh, videos, dozens of videos that I'm going to do, I am going to focus on that jail experience just because, uh, you know, it's something that I know is very important and has been very helpful for people who have been fearful of what's going to happen to them. So um, uh, click like, subscribe, and I will talk to you soon, okay?